I do believe we are live. And I do believe uh, that there will be a, the usual delay before people join in for all of the fun. But nevertheless, welcome to the Gentleman's Guide to Gaming, and we're back for another character creation video. This time, a little earlier into its connected sale than we were for the one uh, prior, if I you know, do say so myself. I um, may have left a little late with the V20 sale, so apologies for that. We, As we were running the character creation session, the sale ended. <laughs> Which uh, wasn't the best way of going about things, I will admit. But this time, the sale only started on Monday, so as of time of recording, what, two days ago. So that means we should have most of a week left. And that means you, the viewer, lucky you, should have most of a week left to take advantage of the sale as well. What sale is that? Well, it's Onyx Path Publishing's 10th anniversary. That's right, we've had 10 years. We've been going for 10 damn years, bloody years, clawing, scratching, biting our way forward. And, well... That means we are reducing the cost of various RPGs that we produce down to 10% of their normal cost. And that's not a small thing. That's a pretty deep discount. In this case, this week, it is Werewolf the Apocalypse 20th Anniversary Edition. Uh, say that with a mouthful of marbles. And W20, as it's otherwise known is one of my favourite of the 20th anniversary lines. I am a big fan of the core book. I feel... Well, I've got lots of feelings about the 20th anniversary core books, which we'll have to go into at some point. But I do feel W20 is one of the most complete versions of the game. And what's more, right now you can get every single W20 book. That's Werewolf the Apocalypse 20th Anniversary Edition book with 90% off the price. That's it. 90% off down to 10% for the Onyx Path 10th Anniversary. Where can you do that? The link is right below in the video description. So if you want to go there while I'm talking go ahead. I'm not going to be offended. But in celebration of this discount, in celebration of the anniversary, we are going to create a character for Werewolf the Apocalypse. And as it was for our Vampire the Dark Ages character creation session, this is going to be a group exercise. It's going to be collaborative. I'm going to be using your ideas, whether they're good, bad, or indifferent, to create this character. So, if you're here, if you're engaged, if you want to, ch uh, to chime in, speak now. Write your comments in the chat. I will gladly uh, read them out, as long as they're not too insulting, and we'll go from there. Now, before we do go ahead with all that, I uh, should say, right now on my Patreon, I am running a Wealth the Wild West game using W20 for uh, some of my patrons, and that game is going wonderfully. I'm really enjoying that. It's set in a small town called Hopeless in Nevada, so Hopeless, Nevada. Uh, where silver mines are being uh, struck, and obviously that bodes well for the werewolf pack that have just arrived in the region. This is now their territory. Their tribal, uh, their pack totem is bear, uh, so they have been designated with healing the area and healing the people. So we'll have to see how well that goes. Uh, if you're interested in my Patreon and any games I happen to be running, if you want to play in any games that I'm running, then you can, of course, do so. You just need to sign up to my Patreon, and you can find that linked on matthewdawkins.com, which is also in the video description below. It's right at the bottom there, a link to my website. And while I'm waiting for people to roll in, I should also say, today, Wednesday, it's a big day for me because one of the books I develop has been released today. It's They Came From Camp Murder Lake, uh, which is one of my favourite titles. Camp Murder Lake, uh, I can just imagine the teens that would stay in a place called Camp Murder Lake and think this is the perfect place to get it on for the first time. And it's our slasher movie, uh, They Came From. So it's 1970s, 1980s slasher movies like Halloween, Friday the 13th, all the way through to The Stepfather and Alien, and all sorts of things are incorporated into this book. 
and it is maybe my favorite of the they came from supplements possibly i shouldn't show preference because you know that they are in a way my children uh, but i created they came from camp murder lake with a fantastic team of creators writers artists editor and so forth and i really recommend you check it out if slasher movies are your thing if you like horror then look up they came from camp murder lake it is also linked in the video description below because i'm efficient like that so let's get started with creating our werewolf shall we Okay, now I anticipate, of course, that because this is a midweek stream, as opposed to the uh, last one, which was in the weekend, I'm going to get fewer viewers here, a little less participation. Uh, but, if you are viewing, and you would like to participate, then please do say so. I'm going to be asking questions, talking over this character, and I will be grateful for your ideas. Hello, Junk Bucket, I'm glad you've tuned in. So let's start with concept first. Now, if you tuned into the V20 Dark Ages character creation video, you'll know that concept, for me, is the core of a character. Hello, the Kanuku. Hello, Kali Dalla Stella. <laughs> My name is Matthew, not Matt, um, to everyone calling me Matt right now. Um, oh, and yeah, everyone's tuning in. Fantastic. Now everyone comes in, just as we start getting into the character creation stuff. Uh, howdy, hi, and good evening, uh, wherever you may be. Now, what was I about to say? Yes, concept, very important. In any World of Darkness game, I like to think of the concept first, and I use the Monty Cook method of character creation, which is I create a character that is built up of an adjective noun who verbs. It's a good way of coming up with a nice, simple character. And so we need some kind of... We need some kind of hook for this werewolf before we start thinking of tribe because usually that's what everyone goes for first just like they always go for clan first let's think of a good concept um so i'm thinking firstly and i know this is kind of breaking my own rule i want to actually go for a lupus werewolf this time i want to go for an actual wolf because very few people create werewolves that are wolf born they're, they say they are harder to play. I disagree with that. Um, they say that they are harder to come up with a unique concept for, and I disagree with that too. You just need to think of the different things that wolves might go through, and especially wolves whose families are kinfolk and werewolves. And they can have uh, come across just as many worm, weaver, wild elements in their formative years as a homid werewolf. So... We're going to think of a character that grew up as a wolf. And that will help direct our concept. So sorry, James Ellsbury, your excellent suggestion of an escaped convict who wants to redeem themselves in the eyes of the family is a good one, but it probably won't work for our wolf. But let's see whether we can manipulate that. A teen wolf, yeah, I've heard of teens, teen wolves before. That's not a unique concept. So we've got an escaped convict. Hmm... Ah, forgiveness. Chase Quant says forgiveness. A lupus who has seen the damage humans do to the planet but still wants to save them. That's, I like that, Chase. That sounds very Children of Gaia-like if we were to look at tribes, which we're not yet. So let's concentrate on that forgiveness. A mountain wolf. Okay, thank you, Cephalopod. That's a good idea as well. Nicholas says, how about a wolf who likes to taste all kinds of meat and non-carnivorous food? A sommelier wolf. Mm, well, that could be an interesting one. Let's combine some of these concepts. So I like the idea of a wolf that wants for, uh, wants to seek forgiveness for humanity. Uh, we've also got the Gogo -Go Bacala saying, a lost pup who was lost in wolf home. That's good. Potentially being the runt of a litter, given new chances of being a lupine. A desert wolf. See, everyone's coming up with ideas now. As soon as you throw that bait into the water, people start coming up with concepts. I like that. But let's go back to that original concept of an escaped convict who wants to redeem themselves in the eyes of the family. Maybe not an escaped convict, because wolves don't tend to imprison their own, but they do want to redeem themselves in the eyes of the family. They are trying to find forgiveness for humans, for mortals, um, for homids, if you like. So, hmm, adjective... An adjective, so a forgiving, 
a forgiving uh, runt, as we've got uh, the suggestion of being a runt of a litter. A forgiving lost runt. No, no, that's going to get too complicated, sorry. A forgiving runt who, <laughs> who wants to redeem themselves. No, oh, this is going to be small. <laughs> uh, so we're playing a forgiving runt who wants to redeem themselves. There you go. Uh, so what does that tell us? Well, it makes it sound like a character is quite soft, doesn't it? Uh, because they're the smallest of the litter. They probably weren't expected to survive. Uh, they're forgiving, therefore they're not a, they're not warlike. They're probably not going to be an Arun. And uh, they want to redeem themselves. What did they do that requires redemption? They are clearly prepared to forgive others. Maybe they're the kind of guilt-wracked priest individual, you know? Spiritual. They are perfectly capable of forgiving others, but they can never forgive their own sense of guilt. That's the question. We need to work out what what she is trying to redeem herself for. The last character I made was a man for V20 Dark Ages. This is a she now. Uh, so maybe it is the dealing with humans. Maybe that maybe this wolf preferred the company of humans. And they need to redeem... Ah, that actually really works. That really works, Callie. Because they are forgiving. They have often spent time in the company of humans. Maybe human kinfolk because they um, they were a runt. They were outcast from their litter, from their parents. And so they were cast out. They spent time with humans. They learned how to forgive humans, see the best in humans. Uh, but the closer they drew to humans, of course, the fur farther they were pushed away from wolves, and so they need to redeem themselves in the eyes of the other wolves, the other lupus around. Okay, so this makes sense. All right, so let's now have a look at the next stage. Next stage, uh, for me, tends to be breed. We've, of course, already selected lupus, so let's go for that. Now, up is auspice. So auspice is obviously an interesting one because when I run games, I tend to lean more on auspice than tribe. I tend to think of auspice as more important uh, and honestly, it's one of the functions of Werewolf that makes this game work better than a lot of the other World of Darkness games. A lot of people will say Vampire, Wraith, Mage, they're hard to run. Werewolf, you know what you, you've got to do. You've got a mission, you've got an objective, you're a party built straight away. And for the most part, that's because of the auspice. As long as you've got a five-person pack or five-wolf pack, you all have a role to play. So, the question is, which auspice shall we go for? Let's see, Agent29416 is already chiming in with Philodox, or Philodox. Uh, I've heard it pronounced so many different ways, or two different ways. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, let's think. Philodox feels like good if they're trying to understand humanity. Galliard, Theurge, uh, so, okay, we've got a lot of uh, different... We've got some dispute here. Uh, so, so far, Philodox has got the is winning. So by all means, chime in. Chime in. What do you want me to build here? Okay. So Theurge, Theurge has got three votes. Philodox has got three. Theurge is up to four. This is like a horse race now, isn't it? Uh, Galliard has got two. So far, Ragabash and Arun are not even on the table. Theurge comes in again for another hit. Ragabash. Okay, now there's two Ragabashes in. And Philodox goes up again. And now Theurge again. I think Theurge is probably going to win this one. Although Ragabash is quickly cornering this. It's uh, speeding up. The Ragabashes have really come out of the shadows here to exert their presence. And no, no, another Galliard. Brina steps in with the Galliard. And that means the Galliard is about even now with the Philodox. Oh, and we've got the Philodox again. Oh, Philodox is approaching Theurge. I'm going to um, put it down to the next three that get nominated. And so, okay, yeah, it is an auction, isn't it? So, and, and I'm over to 
the uh, Miramisu in the corner. Miramisu says Theurge. Theurge. Is that is there any advance on Theurge? Is there any advance on Theurge? I'm going Theurge, Theurge once. Theurge twice. A Ragabash over there, but Ragabash isn't close. It's either the Theurge or the Philodox at this point. Soul to the Theurge. Andre Natali calls it. So maybe now would be the good opportunity for me to explain what the auspices are. Uh, so I'm going to do this in brief, because you can currently buy Werewolf 20th Anniversary Edition for 10% of its regular price, so it's pretty easy to look this information up. However, I'll tell you, in brief, what these five auspices are all about. So, and I'm doing this in the most stereotypical way, so I apologise if you prefer this kind of explanation with a little bit of nuance. Ragabash is the trickster auspice, uh, is the auspice that is based around uh, providing wisdom through uh, foolishness, through humiliation, through jokes, through riddles, through tricks, uh, sometimes through song. Uh, they are more keen on sabotage than on outright murder because it's better to teach someone a lesson than it is to just wipe them out entirely. The Theurge is the werewolf that is most in tune with the spirit world, nature, the Umbra, uh, where the spirits, where our ancestors go after we die, after they die. The Theurge is the one who is most at home using gifts on the battlefield instead of uh, their claws as a general rule. They may also stock up on fetishes, on uh, various mystical items that will assist their pack in battle. The Philodox is the law keeper, the person who remembers, who recites the creed, the litany, the rules by which all Garou, the werewolves, live and abide. They are, in times of peace, they tend to be the leaders of the pack because they're the ones who know the hierarchy. They're the ones who know to, how to award the renown that a werewolf is due for various actions. The Philodox tends to be the one who can provide guidance and wisdom when the rest of the pack needs it. The Galliard is, in some senses, your bard, in other senses your mouthpiece, uh, the great communicator, the negotiator, the diplomat, the singer. The singing is a great part of being a Galliard, or should I say howling, in the case of a werewolf. The Galliard will compose the songs for your pack, will sing the songs of your pack, whether they're songs of victory, songs of defeat, mourning, or triumph. The Galliard is often greatly charismatic and can win favour for your pack. And finally we have the Arun, which is often everyone's favourite uh, auspice because it's the one most werewolves, well, most players play as, uh, regardless of what their auspice has been designated, and it is your battle wolf, your warlord, the werewolf that is uh, drawn to snap claws and jaws on the uh, entities of the worm, the minions of the Great Destroyer. The Arun is the one who will be scarred with battle and wear those scars proudly, will wield a great clave and cut through the enemies of Gaia. The Arun is the champion, the fighter. And in our case we're going for Theurge, because Theurge got the most votes. And so now we have the next bit, and this auction is going to be one hell of a. Uh, <laughs> this one's going to be one hell of an auction because there's a lot of different tribes. Whoops, lots of different tribes available. And uh, I'm not opening this up to Bunyip, Croatan. You know what? I'm going to open up to Bunyip, Croatan, and White Howlers, the Lost Tribes as well. Uh, so. We know, let's recap, I know you're going to start pouring in your tribe suggestions now. We know that this character is a forgiving runt who wants to redeem themselves. They were wolf-born, but they spent more time among the company of humans. The rest of their lupus family cast them out for this, but their proximity to humans allowed them to see the good in humankind as well as the evil. This is how they developed their forgiving streak. Unfortunately, they need to redeem themselves in the eyes of the wolves that they left back home because they are seen as a traitor to their lupus kin. Now, this lupus werewolf is a theurge, which means they are more in tune with the spirit world, the umbra, than perhaps they are with most wolves and humans on the material world. Maybe that's how they found solace, maybe that's how they found wisdom when they were cast out from their pack initially. 
what tribe do they belong to? The only restriction really is we can't really do glass walkers because this is a lupus werewolf. I've seen plenty of people play around with that over the years, but my preference is glass walkers are homid wolves, and I guess metis only. Uh, so, let's see. We've already got suggestions for Bone Noras. Bone Nora is one of my favourite tribes, undoubtedly. Fianna. Now, Fianna is another of my favourites and is also one of the most popular tribes in the game. Uh, Wendigo. Octena or Children of Gaia? Children of Gaia is uh, the most logical choice for this character, given the forgiveness and redemption side. Um, Red Talons for the hard mode of redemption. Red Talons is appealing. Red Talons is actually my favourite tribe, generally speaking. Silver Fang would be fascinating with this concept as Maddox. We've got other people nominating Red Talons. Silent Striders, that's uh, why I'm wearing my Followers of Set pin, because the... Uh, Followers of Set and Silent Striders are good friends. More votes for the Bone Nora's Wendigo, Silent Striders, and okay. Alright, so currently, if we go back into auction mode, it looks like Children of Gaia are in the lead. Children of Gaia are in the lead with Bone Nora's just behind them. And now we've got Red Talons coming up, coming up right behind the Children of Gaia. Children, um, the Red Talons have overtaken the Bone Nora's, so let's see how things go as this auction and this horse race proceeds. We've currently got Children of Gaia storming into the lead. It must be the forgiveness aspect that's given them a bit of impetus, dynamite up the bum. Now Silent Striders, Silent Striders, Silent Striders twice. Twice have actually surpassed the Red Talons. Wendigo are catching up. They're coming around the outside. Children of Gaia, however, stretch forward a little farther. Shadow Lords, Shadow Lords, a big outside runner there. The Dark Horse of the pack, you might say. Get a Fenris sounds interesting. I agree, Velvet Tea Cake, but Get a Fenris are pretty much out of this race already. Silent Striders have now overcome the Children of Gaia suggestion. Silent Striders are, as the name implies, striding into the lead. And then we've got a long quote uh, from Hans Unkraut, which I cannot quote right now because because I'm in auction mode. Children of Gaia, oh, Children of Gaia are now neck and neck with the Silent Striders, but Andre Natali comes in again with the Silent Striders, and Silent Striders are going up ahead. No, Children of Gaia, Children of Gaia come out twice. Red Talons, Red Talons. I wish Red Talons had more energy behind them right now, but right now I think this is a two-horse race, two-wolf race between the Children of Gaia, and we have the Silent Striders, and people coming in again with the Get Fenris. The Get Fenris have got this secret popularity here. People want to push them forward, but I don't think they're going to get it this time. Silent Striders, there's a day, is going to be a dangerous race uh, if you are in the audience I think. Uh, the Children of Gaia Red Talons, uh, uh, yes I, I would love the Red Talons to win this as well but I think it is purely down to the Children of Gaia and the Silent Striders at this point no we can't have Glass Walkers <laughs> this is a lupus werewolf, pay attention Children of Gaia I think uh, they're, they're ahead now, not just by a head, but also by a neck. And the Children of Gaia coming up against uh, Logan Cole, an AP commentator, really pushing them forward there. Now we've got Junk Bucket just adding a lol 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 <laughs> to proceedings. That is not a tribe that I recognize in this edition of Werewolf the Apocalypse. Uh, we come to the end of our race now. There is no Glass Walkers. Stop suggesting Glass Walkers. It will not work. We are not making that character this time. <laughs> And it looks like Children of Gaia have pulled ahead. I think they're about to cross the finishing line unless there's a sudden burst of Silent Strider love from the audience. If everyone nominates Silent Striders all at once, that's the only thing that's going to push them up in front. I know you keep saying get a Fenris, but get a Fenris did not get enough votes. I think that's going to be it. Looks like, unless everyone's typing right now, it's going to be Children of Gaia. Uh, well, thank you, Paul Smart, there for throwing in a rather limp-wristed Silent Striders <laughs> at the end there. Uh, uh, Simba. No, we have gone for Children of Gaia. I'm sorry, everybody. You're, you voted too late. There was a nice burst of speed there from the Silent Striders at the very end, but it wasn't going to happen. So, phew, that was exciting, wasn't it? Last time it was, uh, <laughs> last uh, video, the V20 Dark Ages character creation, it was Macho Man Randy Savage. This time, time it was a horse race commentator. Team Gaia wins. I'm sure most werewolves would be very happy about that. So, now, 
No, I know glass walkers aren't bound by the weaver, but what I did suggest before we pick tribes is I'm not a big fan of lupus glass walkers. I tend to put them firmly in the homid camp, much as red talons are put firmly in the lupus camp. That's a preference of mine. It's said about, spoken about in various books. So that's what we're going to go for. I like the fact that now people are saying I don't actually know anything about werewolf. I just like the sound of the children of Gaia. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, will I repeat this with W5 if we do a W5 sale, or if someone, um, goes on my Patreon and pays for me to make a video about it? Uh, well, it wasn't the obvious choice, Danny. This was the most popular choice. So now let's look, shall we, at our attribute split. Attributes, well, I don't know why I'm checking, because I know for a fact it's going to be 753. So we're playing a Theurge. Uh, he was in the middle of the V20 Dark Ages stream as well, Velvet Sea Cake. Uh, so yes, we're looking at our attributes as always. It's seven in one attribute, five in the other, three in the next. And I know I just went mental, social, physical. I feel like that may be appropriate. However, uh, it should be noted that the character we made for V20 Dark Ages a few days ago was also mental, social, physical. So maybe we should mix this one up. I know the inclination is when you're playing a Theurge that mental has to be highest, but that's not always the case. You do have to communicate with spirits as well. And I'm feeling like because they're forgiving and because they're a lupus who rarely spent time with other wolves and more so spent time with other humans, social would probably make sense. And yeah, yeah, uh, we've already got two people saying SMP. So let's go for it, shall we? SMP, I think. So let's go for Charisma. And now we're going to have the old third dot problem again. Do we see this person as manipulative? I don't, actually. We're not making an abomination. Not on this stream. Lots of, lots of people are saying this character is a simp. Social, <laughs> mental, physical. Uh, so that we put the seven dots there. You may think that's a strange combination of dots there. Manipulation is a very useful attribute. But this character is, if not naive, very optimistic. Uh, she is indeed very fluffy. Yes, uh, we do need to come up with a name for her. We will do at the end. Um, but now we need to do mental. So we did social, mental, physical. So I'm going to go for... I think we're going to put some wits in. There. Oh, there could be an abomination, love, Brina, if we ever do a uh, true black hand character creation or something like that. Uh, I think perception will probably be lowest here. Again, if we're playing on the sort of forgiveness... I'd actually, I don't think just because she's forgiving doesn't mean she has to be naive. I'm going to drop wits to two and perception to three. So whether that says naivety or whether that just says she's... Mm, she goes with a gut. I think that makes sense. And when it comes to physical... Now, I'm very tempted by the even split. I think this character, by the way, in answer to all the people questioning right now, should be a part of a pack, although she may be the sole lupus werewolf in a pack of Homid, or maybe even Metis, uh, given the character's forgiveness. I'm not a big fan of the Metis as a concept. I find them a bit uh, uh, problematic, but uh, if any character could get on with them, uh, and accept them without judgment. It would be this one by the sounds of it. She is a runt, that is true, but I don't feel like any of these should really be better than the other. That's the thing. Uh, I don't want to just put her strength down to one and make her nimble. So then maybe put the stamina down to one. Yeah, we'll go glass cannon. Let's do that. Uh, yeah. How often do you see a character with one stamina? It would be suicide, I hear you say. Well, that's what makes it a challenge. So now let's look at abilities. 13, 9, and 5 is the way these things go. 
So we know, what do we know about this character already? We know that she is forgiving. We know that she wants redemption for herself. We know that she has spent time with humans. We also know she is a theurge. I think those are a few things that are going to direct a lot of these skills. So what have we got here? We've got people suggesting uh, Primal Urge, Animal Ken. I'm happy to. Let's just make a marker. And these Primal Urge, in case you're unaware, is a werewolf's attunement to the Umbra, uh, the spirit world, and ability to shift form easily. Uh, so... What else do we have? Wells do indeed have healing, so yeah, who cares if you only got one dot in stamina. Empathy, performance, investigation, I agree. Uh, you'll note right now I am just putting one dot in every single one. It's just to note which ones might be useful. So, what else do we have? Empathy does fit the background. Okay, so these are the things I'm looking at first. Now, I'm also thinking rituals will make sense because this character is a theurge, as will enigmas. Uh, I'm also thinking that we could put some alertness down. And probably not subterfuge. Survival makes sense as a lupus werewolf. Okay, these are making some sense to me. Let's go with this for now. Some occult. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is uh, for a tabletop role-playing game, Mr. S.S. Or Ms. S.S. Yeah, so we need to put 13 dots in one, 9 dots in another, 5 dots in another. Uh, so let's have a look. Uh, it looks like Maddox said it should be talent, skills, knowledges. Well, I'm all for specialised characters. I like characters who aren't just across the board. Bear in mind these characters work in a pack. They should be filling in for each other's weaknesses. So let's really hone this character. Wolves do need stealth too, you're right. Okay, so... I'm thinking, let's just bump these up first and see what happens. So we've got eight now in skills. Um, hmm. I think she is new to this Theurge. I think she, this is, she is new to this Theurge thing. And so she doesn't know much about rituals. Quite the contrary. Or enigmas. So, yeah. Uh, I'm going to put Knowledges as her five dots. How about that? This does mean that as far as Theurges go, she is by no means the top of the sept, uh, but that means we have a lot of points to put elsewhere. Uh, I'm going to keep rounding out. So Empathy makes sense. Probably a bit of Expression as well. And Athletics, we'll put that there. You know, it's interesting... Maddox was suggesting 13.95, and as much as I like all of these, I'm thinking that's probably a good idea. Uh, I'm going to put that there to make this into our 9, and that means we've got lots of dots we can put in here. Now, I don't go above 3 dots at character creation until I start spending freebie points. So three, six, nine, ten. Let's put a bit into leadership. Eleven, twelve, and thirteen. There we go. That makes sense to me. So now we go on to backgrounds. Uh, we have five dots, as always. Again, I keep checking the book and uh, the number of times I've created these characters. Uh, so, what do we want to go for here? What would be useful? No brawl for this character. This character is absolutely not a combatant. Well, she won't get bitten uh, without brawl. She's got athletics. She'll just dodge out the way. So, which backgrounds make sense, make most sense? I'm thinking, 
even though she's a lupus, she's actually going to have one dot in resources. Why? Because she spends time with humans. I'm also going to put down that she does have kinfolk, but only connection with one. Kinfolk are unshape changing relatives. Uh, so she's been cast out by the majority of her family, but she still has contact with one of them. Uh, contact among the humans, I'm going to put up to two dots there, and now I'm going to give her something that is slightly more connected to her role as a theurge. Let's go for rites, given she's got one dot in rituals. I like spirit heritage as well, Maddox, and I'm thinking that when we get to the freebie points, we'll probably put some in there. So let's have a look now at the benefits she gains automatically. As a lupus, her initial gnosis is five. She can choose, let's see. So she has access to gifts based on her being a lupus. The ac she has access to hare's leap, heightened senses, predator's arsenal, prey mind, and sense prey. Um, I could read through what each of these gifts does, but again, this book, Werewolf, the Apocalypse uh, 20th Anniversary Edition, is only 10% of its normal price because of the Onyx Path 10th Anniversary, so I recommend buy yourself a copy, download it. Uh, you can play along as we make this character. Uh, the link to do so is right below. So, let's see. Heightened Senses make sense. I wouldn't say Predator's Arsenal does. Prey Mind, Sense Prey... Prey Mind. I'm going to actually look up Prey Mind to remind myself of that one because I think it could be a good one for this character. And I do just want to make sure. So, Lupus Gifts. Prey Mind. As Gaia dies and a natural order is perverted, predators become prey with increasing frequency. This is a sorrowful truth that Lupus know all too well. This gift assists the Garu in evading their enemies that they might fight another day. Showing them places to hide, ways to run, and even chance to strike back a hare or deer spirit teaches this gift. The player rolls wits plus primal urge. Each success adds one die to all pools made to escape out distance, hide from, or evade pursuit. Yeah, I think that makes sense to me. So we will find. Huh. That's interesting. It's not on there. So that means I will just have to type it in. Okay. Uh, so then we have to look at her auspice. She is a theurge, so her initial rage is two. And the beginning gifts that come with... Uh, oh, and of course, as a theurge, her beginning wisdom is three. As a theurge, her beginning gifts are either Mother's Touch, Sense Worm, Spirit Snare, Spirit Speech, and Umbral Tether. Now, I should ask, uh, being a theurge under the crescent moon, it of course behooves me to listen to the spirits out there in the chat. Do any of those strike you as appealing, those of you who know Werewolf? Mother's Touch, Sense Worm, Spirit Snare, Spirit Speech, and Umbral Tether. Which of those sound appealing to you? I'm willing to take suggestions. Mother's Touch, for instance, is a healing ability. And would make sense for this character, Child of Gaia, Forgiving... Spirit speech, also useful, given that it allows you to, as the name implies, speak with spirits. Umbral tether. Um, allows them to find their point, uh, the point that they entered the umbra, uh, so it's like a silvery umbilical cord. Sense worm, also very good. Sense worm is always useful it is to detect evil of Werewolf the Apocalypse. I think spirit speech, let's go for that. Everyone seems to be on in favour of spirit speech. Uh, we've got a few suggestions for Mother's Touch, but I'm thinking we could probably get that with our tribe gifts, if I'm unless I'm very much mistaken. 
So Children of Gaia, initial willpower is four. No restrictions on backgrounds, beginners, beginning gifts, brother's scent, jam weapon, mercy, mother's touch, and resist pain. Uh, I'm going to go for mother's touch here. This character is sounding lovely. An excellent wolf. So now that we have done that, we need to spend our freebie points. Uh, so rank is one. That's a humble Kliath. So now we get to spend our freebie points. Uh, yes, yeah, so... Um, to the person asking about stepping sideways, entering the Umbra, uh, you can do so through a reflective pool or where the Umbra, the gauntlet between this world and the spirit world is weak. Uh, it is easier to do in such a place than it is in, a, let's say, a heavily urbanised environment. Uh, but the, while the spirits live there, you can't necessarily communicate them e with them easily. Sometimes they can communicate with you if they are that way inclined, but spirit speech gives you a leg up to doing so. So yes, freebie points now. So the question is, do we make her less useless in stamina? That's going to cost us five freebie points. And also, what abilities could we bump up? They always cost us two per dot. Backgrounds, also useful. I'm not that interested in buying another gift, honestly. It costs seven points, and there's other things I'd rather spend points on at this time. Gnosis, for instance, that costs two per dot. All freebies into background. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, there's no generation to put it in uh, in this game. What a shame. No extra actions per turn for us. Uh, you were asking about a silver cord. So if you enter the Umbra, the spirit world, and you have uh, one of those gifts that I was talking about a moment ago, you can basically trace your silver cord back to where you entered the Umbra. It's like a lifeline. Few more knowledges and potentially the stamina. I'm thinking stamina. Willpower only costs one. Yeah, okay, so this character isn't going to be utterly feeble. Though it does tie in nicely into her being the runt of the litter. Hmm. I think she can still be the runt with two stamina. Maybe I'm wussing out there. So, okay. Right. That's five of our 15 points done. Let's also look at backgrounds now, because they're always a fun thing to spend on. Spirit Heritage, I very much appreciated the suggestion to do Spirit Heritage. I, likewise, I'm a big fan of Ancestors. But Spirit Heritage works well for me. I'm going to actually put a couple of dots in that. Uh, so that's now seven points spent. Uh, I'm going to bump Gnosis up, so that's nine points spent. And that leaves me with six points, so that's three more dots I can put in abilities here. Uh, I've had it suggested that it goes into knowledges on this side and maybe a bit of subterfuge. So let's have a look on this side first. We are going to make her... Uh... Oh, we could actually bump up one of these to four at this point. No, you know what? I don't think she needs it. Um, they don't astral project so much as they step into the Umbra. Uh, they don't leave their bodies behind when they do it. So I'm going to spend two dots to put rituals up. Uh, two points to put rituals up. That leaves me with four points. I want to put at least one more abil one ability up to four. So it's either got to be Empathy, Primal Urge, or Animal Ken. Hmm. Yeah, you're right, Majar. 50 people watching, 32 likes. Where's all your likes, damn you? I mean, you could all be giving me dislikes. The wonderful thing about YouTube today is I can't see your dislikes. So you go for it. Um, but yeah, send me likes. But more importantly than that, click on the links below. Because the game we're creating this character for is 90% off its current price. Uh, there's a link down there for They Came From Camp Murder Lake, which is my newest game. It was released today. 
uh, and at slasher movies uh, set in the 1980s and the 70s and 80s. And you've also got a link to my website, matthewdawkins.com, where you can do things like sign up to my Patreon, buy me a cup of tea, look at my voluminous list of credits, and click on any one of them to buy a copy of something I've worked on. Empathy, I, it's quite possible I could see the dislikes, I just don't choose to. <laughs> uh, let's see. We're getting a suggestion for empathy there from Jason Schmidt, and I agree. Empathy. So we've got one more. Well, we've got another two points we can spend. Let's put subterfuge up so she's not completely hopeless in a social situation. Now, we don't need to update our second page. Uh, but this is just for anyone who's unaware that in Wealth the Apocalypse 20th Anniversary Edition, when your where, when your wolf changes shape, their attributes are affected. The good news is, for this character, whose stamina up until recently was woeful, the stamina never goes down. Unfortunately, uh, social traits do. So yeah, uh, that is our character pretty much completed, except we need a name. Uh, I'm not I'm not going to do Merits and Flaws. Merits and Flaws are my least favourite part of character creation. Some people love it, uh, I'm, but I think Merits and Flaws, so uh, this isn't being judgy or gatekeeper-y, I should say caveat caveat in the first place uh but i think merits and flaws are fantastic tools to help push new players in directions of play and i think that's largely their purpose uh, i think when you've been playing for a while you can go in those directions of play without having the points assigned to those merits and flaws you can just do them uh, now obviously that's different when you've got things that actually affect your traits but i rely on traits so little when it comes to actually role playing and more on roleplay uh, that it tends to be a bit like a shopping trip in the game of D&D. It takes ages to actually choose what you want and by the end of it, it makes very little difference to the actual chronicle. Uh, so it follows through flame. I like that, Jason Schmidt. So, I mean, follows through isn't great. Uh, no, there's more. There's room for more backgrounds, uh, Danny. I think we've got some more space down here. No, we don't. Good God. Uh, I could pick a right for this character, but I don't think we will. So we've got Alba being suggested by Junk Bucket. So our, our only two character suggestion name character name suggestions, I should say, Alba and follows through flame. Hmm. Yeah, see, I don't think follows through is a good look for a werewolf. <laughs> uh, Sarai, Sarai Turner. Well, she is a lupus, so probably having a... Although she does spend time among humans. Alba is, you know, Alba is a simple name. It's a good name. I would prefer a character name that is more wolfy, like, I don't know, something something very simple, like Howls hyphen at hyphen the hyphen moon. We're not going to go for that because that's obvious, Howls at the moon. Um, but yes, werewolves do tend to be named by their pack. Uh, this character will not be Black Mara. Um, will not be Red Claw either. She's a healer, so she needs to be something peaceful, but something, something peace related, something forgiveness. Steps aside, gravity's shadow. You've got it. You've got it. It sounds. You wouldn't believe I'm a writer, would you? It sounds like an odd name, but and yet. It ties in really well with the steps sideways that you can do in Well for the Apocalypse to enter the Umbra. And it ties into the fact that she is not a combatant. She is a she's seeking forgiveness and redemption. Uh, forgiveness for others, redemption for herself. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think Steps Aside is a really good name for this character. So a can of Coke to you, Gravity Shadow, treat yourself. You win a silver penny. 
So yeah, that is that. Uh, if I was to pick a totem right now, I think this character would go well with a deer. Or whether it's a totem in the book or not, irrelevant to me at this point. But I think a deer actually makes sense. Something that would typically be hunted by wolves, but in this case has taken charity on this particular character. So yeah, that is it. I mean, character creation for Wealth of the Apocalypse tends to only take about 15-20 minutes. Uh, sometimes even less, if you've done it lots. Uh, in our case, it's taken closer to 50, because I've been talking through every single step and running auctions with all of you. So... Steps Aside has been built. She is our Lupus Theurge of the Children of Gaia, a forgiving runt who wants to redeem themselves because they spent too much time among humans who she sees the benefit of. She believes that they are capable of good, of serving Gaia, but her wolf family has cast her out for this perfidy. And so she... She seeks their redemption in their eyes, but is also forgiving in herself. She just can't forgive herself. That's the problem. So, that is, uh, that's a character made. And, yeah, usually you wouldn't be talking through it at this length. So thank you very much, everybody, for watching. But before I terminate, I'm not going to terminate just yet. I'm not terminating just yet. So don't you go anywhere. Because I have a favour to ask of you, and don't worry, I'm not going to be asking you to donate money anywhere like that. I am, however, going to say that if you enjoyed this stream, and I certainly did, and I really appreciate all of your input, do stay tuned, because next week I imagine we'll be doing another one for either Wraith or Changeling, maybe both. Uh, so click the bell icon so you know when it goes live. It will be around this time of evening, so hopefully you'll be able to uh, watch and throw in your ideas once again. Uh, I run games for members of my Patreon, for people who are asking, and that's actually a good segue, because if you click on MatthewDawkins.com down below, you can see my website, you can get a link to my Patreon. If you really want to play a game with me running it, uh, I can do that. I already do do that. I am currently running Wraith the Oblivion, Werewolf the Wild West, Vampire the Dark Ages, Cthulhu by Gaslight, and The One Ring. I'm running for five different groups right now for my Patreons, and they're all having a good time, in my opinion. I'm having a good time, that's what's important, and if you want to sign up for that, all you have to do is go on my Patreon and do so. So that is one thing handled. The next thing is, I'm never going to not suggest it, this game right here. If you haven't heard of They Came From Beyond the Grave, uh, then... I suggest you look it up. You can buy They Came From Beyond the Grave on Drive Through RPG right now, uh, and it's in print and PDF. It's my game uh, via Onyx Path. Uh, I developed it, but Onyx Path published it. And it's a game of 1960s, 1970s, sort of hammer horror, amicus horror. There's werewolves, vampires, uh, crypt keepers, asylums. All the warlocks, the devil himself appears in it. It is a love letter to the kind of horror that I really love. Uh, the sort of portmanteaus of Tales of, of, from the Crypt and that sort of thing. And it's been doing so well on Drive Through RPG. And I would really appreciate it if you check it out. If you haven't already purchased a copy. If you have already purchased a copy, please, 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 I'm asking you right now, please leave a rating. And if you can, a review, because it does make more people buy it. And I need people to buy these games. <laughs> this is how I do this full time. I do this as a job. You know, I write games for a living, but I need people to buy the damn things. And They Came From Beyond the Grave is a game you can buy if you want to support me. But also, the recently released They Came From Camp Murder Lake of Slasher Movies and More Your Thing is another game I developed, and that is linked right below. It only came out today. You can buy it in PDF right now. In a few weeks, you'll be able to buy it in print as well. Um, but if you want to get a taster of it, buy it in PDF first. It is linked below. If you buy a copy, again, use the link below if you want to cut me in at all. Um, and if you do so... Again, leave a rating, leave a review. It means a lot. 
and it helps more people decide to buy these games. I appreciate it, very much appreciate it. And the final thing, final thing, is... And thank you very much, everyone, who is currently commenting to say that they've um, never considered playing Werewolf before. Um, are there? Is there room in my games? Um, there are... Is there room in any of my games? I don't think there's room in any of my current games, but it basically, if enough people sign up, I will just start another game, a sixth one. As simple as that. Um, also, Onyx Path, of course. Onyx Path Publishing are my bread and butter. I work for a lot of companies. Uh, I do a lot of writing, of course, for lots of different game companies. I'm currently working with Flyos Games, in fact, on a couple of, of the World of Darkness board games. But Onyx Path Publishing it is the 10th anniversary edition of our company. A 10th anniversary edition. It's our 10th anniversary. We've been in business for that long. And we've been releasing games... Every single Wednesday we have released something new for the last 10 years. That's not bad going, is it? And, you know, sometimes they're only small books, sometimes it's some merchandise, but we release something new every single Wednesday. We update the onyxpath.com every single week to tell you what we're selling. And because it's our 10th anniversary, we are reducing the price of RPGs to 10% of their regular cost every single week. It's a different RPG every single week, sometimes every single month. This week is Werewolf the Apocalypse, hence why we did this video. And you can get every book for Werewolf the Apocalypse 20th Anniversary Edition, of which there are plenty, some of which are on my shelves, at 10% of their regular price, which is, a, frankly, a ridiculous sale which will not be repeated. By the end of this week, that sale will be over. So if Werewolf is your thing, if there's any gaps in your collection for Werewolf 20, Click on the link below because it will take you to the sale page and you'll be able to find all of those books and get them at a ridiculously low cost. There you go. So, next week, we should be doing probably Wraith and or Changeling for character creation. So that will be different, won't it? I believe that's where the sale will be going next week, but we will have to see. This, I agree. Go, go. Oh, Onyx Path makes the best World of Darkness content of any existing company. I agree, but that's because I work for them and I develop the games. <laughs> and the offer didn't end halfway through the stream junk bucket, unlike last the last one. So... That's all I've got to say, really. Check out my website below if you want to support me. Buy a copy of They Came From Beyond the Grave and rate it. Please consider buying a copy of Beyond the Grave. It really does help, and you will enjoy it. It is an incredibly well-written game, and the art is fantastic. Especially, especially, let me just show off some of our full pages in this book. Um because I think they are the, some of the best-looking pieces of art we have ever produced. These full pages that look like movie posters, which we intend to eventually sell as movie posters. Um, there we go. I'll move it around. Um, are just so beautiful. The artist, Derwin Talon, really pulled out all the stops to make these things and the book is beautiful to own to look at but it's also a fantastic game to run so yeah anyway buy a copy of they came from beyond the grave and i will love you forever and send me a message via my website if you do buy a copy because i might be able to hook you up with a game to play in so thank you very much, everybody, for watching. Really appreciate it. It's time for me to go to bed. So cheerio, and see you on the Onyx Path News if you sub subscribe to the Onyx Path YouTube channel this Friday. Bye-bye.